Les arbres sont des organismes immobiles. Trees are motionless living things that live dozens or, or sometimes hundreds of years. So they're subjected to major environmental influences such as the change of seasons. You can see here the seasonal variations of temperatures that trees are subjected to. In tropical climes, that's usually not a problem because the temperature is high all year round. But in colder areas, this can create problems. The main risk is exposure of leaves to frost. Young leaves, when exposed to temperatures below zero degrees, even moderately, minus two, minus three degrees Celsius, die and need to be replaced by the tree. That has a cost for the tree in terms of resources because the tree needs to create a new cohort of leaves to engage in photosynthesis. And it's quite a symmetrical phenomenon in the autumn, losing leaves that are still nutrient rich. Trees are very economical species. Most of them uh, have uh, yellow or red leaves uh, far before the first frost arrives. That's what you can see here. The loss of the green color shows a deterioration of chlorophylls. Chlorophylls are nitrogen rich pigments, and during the yellowing phase, the nitrogen is sent back from the leaves to the branches and can be reused in the following springtime to form new leaves. So, in that context, one would tend to believe that the leaving season uh, should occur mostly in the summer. It sounds logical, but at the same time, the length that the tree holds leaves is uh, the length that it has the ability to gain energy through photosynthesis. So it has to start sufficiently early and end sufficiently late to allow it to develop. And the period when it has leaves needs to allow it to escape frost in the fall and in the spring. And through natural uh, selection, Trees are adapted to the seasonality of temperatures, and from one year to the next, they can follow these variations of temperature. It's a typical example of phenotypic plasticity. One individual with a given uh, genotype has different phenotypes based on the environmental conditions. Here, the variations of phenotype are in the appearance and uh, of leaves and shedding of leaves and the environmental conditions are the temperatures. You can see all of these pictures were taken on April 12th in different years. In the warmest springs, 2007-2011, the leaves uh, grow more precociously and warm autumns associated with a later shedding of leaves. So this ability to follow changes in temperature also appears in the longer term. What we have here for the two, for the oak and the beech, leaves appear earlier in the recent period from 1980 to 2010 uh, as compared to the period between 1950 and 1980. That is a direct impact of global warming and the same thing can be seen in the autumn. Uh, the leaves fall later and later although the signal is not quite as clear as in the spring. Another interesting observation conducted recently showed that in the spring, trees answer less and less strongly to the increase of temperature. This is the number of days of earlier appearance uh, of leaves for a one degree change. In the 1980s, towards the left of the graph, a temperature that was warmer of one by one degree would meant the leaves would appear four days earlier. And then you can see that the sensitivity of trees is now only 2.5 days per degree, and it's observed across many species. So the reasons for this phenomenon is not very clear, but it is quite likely that this loss of sensitivity to high temperature is linked to a uh, lack of exposure to cold temperatures. It sounds paradoxical, but the buds that are going to create new leaves in the following spring are in so-called dormant state in the winter, which 
uh, prevents their development as soon as it's slightly warmer during the winter. So dormancy is a very subtle document because it's reduced by exposure of the buds to uh, cold temperatures. When dormancy has not been reduced by uh, cold temperatures, it'll be less sensitive to higher spring temperatures, so the buds will develop more slowly, and that means the leaves will grow later. To go even further, one will see that for a tree, growing these leaves early is not necessarily beneficial if we compare two years, a fresh year and a warmer year. This is the photosynthesis of a tree in 2013 that had a pretty cool spring, um, late growing leaves and therefore a late photosynthesis. And if we compare that with 2011, when the spring was very warm, and this warm spring meant the leaves appeared earlier than in 2013. Photosynthesis started earlier. So in the spring, in terms of accumulating resources, it's a win-win situation for the tree. But in the summer, Photosynthesis, which is when the tree absorbs carbon, uh, it also loses water. It's, a, uh, it's called plant perspiration. So it dries out the soil and that creates stress during the summer, which results in a drop in photosynthesis. So the leaves grow earlier, hydrostress in the summer, that can happen some years. And it definitely means that growing leaves early is not necessarily beneficial for the tree. So in this presentation, I essentially talked about the variability of phenology over time, what creates the variability uh, from when the leaves grow to when they fall. But another interesting point here is the variability of phenology between individuals, from one individual to another. This is a fine illustration of it. It was shot in April, and you can see trees that are covered in leaves while others are still dormant. The variability between individuals is very uh, marked, and in the same population uh, can uh, reach three weeks. And it's not necessarily detrimental to the tree to grow leaves later. If it had been the case, they would have been eliminated by natural selection. And in fact, it can be an advantage if there is frost in the spring, for instance. And it also allows these late leaving trees to escape predators, uh, certain species of, uh, of uh, caterpillars. and. Uh, uh, various other pathogens. So I hope this presentation makes you want to find out more about the phenology of trees. If you're interested by conducting observations yourself of when the leaves grow, uh, when the trees bloom, when the leaves fall, if you're interested in animal phenology, there is a participative science project called L'Observatoire des Saisons, the Observatory of Seasons, coordinated by scientists and based on observations conducted by uh, communities. Feel free to visit the website and to be involved.